Today, as you can see on the screen, my question is, do edited pictures unknowingly give us self-confidence? This is a topic I'm really interested in, and it's very current and apt at the moment. I think it, it really reflects on factors such as the feel-good factor, your social media in general, your self-esteem, and a lot more. So as you're all probably most aware, there are constantly discussions about how we should love ourselves for who we are and how we should be comfortable in our own skin. And what I love is that my question sort of goes the other way, as if to say, what if we hide the our flaws enough that they makes us confident enough to reveal them in the end? So this talk will be mainly fo focused on pictures of ourselves, pictures we take of ourselves, pictures others have taken of us, rather than scenery and landscapes, because I want to focus on the link between the, the, the need that we feel to edit our, ourselves and how that impacts positively on our self-confidence. So I hope that by the end of the talk, I would have exposed a new perspective for you about editing pictures in general. And I've had a lot of thoughts and ideas about this, which makes me really excited to be here in front of you today. To start with, let's make sure we're on the same page. What do I mean by edited pictures? By edited pictures, I mean the filters that we see on Snapchat and Instagram, and, that the, and the minimal touch-ups that we do using Photoshop. Here on the screen, I have four filters from Snapchat. We have the puppy filter, the flower crown, the golden butterfly, and the unicorn filter. And I will make sure just to differentiate between which, uh, which type of editing I'm using as we go along. Now, let me ask you a question that I asked myself when I started. Why do you think that we feel the need to edit? I'm going to explain a concept to you. Here on the screen, we have two images of the same cupcake. On the left is the original, and on the right is the edited. What I've done is I've increased the contrast by 20% and added a border, making the cupcake look a lot more professional and appealing to the viewer. Now, if the baker or the seller of the cupcake were to publish this in an, in a, in an advertisement, he or she would be most likely to, likely to choose the edited version rather than the original because it gives them confidence that they'll get a more positive outcome meaning more people will buy the cupcake and they get more profit. Here we have the Austrian Alps. On the left is the original and on the right is the Edison. What I've done here is I've increased the sharpness by 25% and I'm making it more crisp and detailed to the viewer. And I've also increased the contrast by 20%. Now, if you are a potential client for, this, for, the, Australia, for the Australian Alps uh, to a ski business, the ski business would be most likely to uh, use the Edison picture to persuade you as it looks more attractive and, they, and you'd be more likely to choose. Now my concept here was even if the original image is perfect and if there's nothing that needs to be changed, we still feel the need to edit because it gives us confidence that we'll get a more positive reaction from it. Now bring this back to ourselves, you could take a stunning photo of yourself yet still edit the picture because it gives you the confidence you'll get more positive compliments or more, more positive feedbacks or more likes from the picture. Now, my first point for you today is social media. I'm going to bring you on a journey, let's say, through social media throughout this talk. We're going to be going through the steps of when we post, what, what some, of the, some of the things people do. Now, just to clarify, I do not have any degree in the art of social media. Or I have no grade to show you, no masters to present to you. But I do feel that as a teenager, with Snapchat and Instagram, in this technology-driven generation, I, I do have enough experience to be able to walk you through. So let's begin. Imagine you've just posted a Snapchat edited picture. So, one with the one of the filters. In this instance, we'll use the flower crown. You get a flood load of comments saying, wow, you look amazing, and you're so pretty in this. Now, when your brain register registers these comments, it doesn't register the comment as the time your best friend said you looked amazing in the flower crown. It registers the comment as the time your best friend said you looked amazing. You, not the filter. And that makes you feel good. Now, after a while, these comments will build up, all making you feel good about yourself, one after the other. Why? In an article written by Sandy Assey Adams, she writes that a compliment is a positive, is a positive reinforcement for us, and that the more often we get these strokes of positive affirmation, the more we learn to feel okay and happy about ourselves. Let me simplify that. The more, happy, the more compliments that we get, the better we feel about ourselves. Now, have a think about that concept, really. The more compliments we get, the happier we feel about ourselves. Now, for some, they may not feel better at all and just brush it off. And for others, it could change their whole viewpoint of, of how they feel in that spur of the moment. Now, putting aside how we feel when we receive a compliment, this is what happens in your brain when you do get one. 
researchers from the National Institute of Physiological Sciences, the Nagoya Institute of Technology, and the University of Tokyo, amongst other Japanese institutions, have found that receiving a compliment, a social reward, is the same as receiving cash. It activates a part of your brain, the corpus striatum, located in the frontal lobe, uh, which is also the area used to encourage passive performance. An author of the study had said, to the brain, receiving a compliment is as much of a social reward as being rewarded cash. Scientific proof has been found that a person performs better when they receive a social reward after completing an exercise. There seems to be scientific val val validity behind the message proves to encourage improvement. Now, in this instance, the activity is the editing and the posting. So what, so what, this, what, this, uh, what this study means to say is that the more we are complimented during an activity, uh, this, the corpus striatum helps us, uh, uses these compliments to better the skill and to better the performance that we've learned. And what about those likes and comments from earlier? One word, dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter produced in the brain when something good is happening to us or when we feel good about something. Now, these likes and comments uh, is what causes the dopamine to be produced. And dopamine is immensely addictive, which is why we go back to the likes and comments constantly. And now when we receive the compliments, the dopamine in our brain produces, all making us feel good about ourselves, just like before when your best friend said, said you're amazing. Now, we can even argue that it's the dopamine that causes us to edit our pictures, like uh, wanting us to achieve the maximum amount of likes or the maximum amount of comments. Now, it's important to note, to note that this isn't about caring or not caring about how, how you feel after someone says something like negative about you. It's how you feel after someone says something positive about you and how that impacts your self-confidence uh, positively. My second point, edited pictures showcase us as our finest. At this point, I really want to emphasize on the effect and how long-lasting they are for the person taking the picture. I think the main points I came up with that help boost your self-confidence were that they make us feel good that with a little work or a, little, a few changes, we could achieve the best versions of ourselves which we've created for ourselves and that they are realistic and achievable versions of ourselves. <laughs> so it's one week later and you're in the mood to post. You take a few selfies, let's say, and then proceed to go on to Photoshop. You remove that one pimple that's been bugging you from the, from the past two weeks to the right of your forehead, and you get rid of those shadows from under your eyes. You hit post. Here come your comments flooding in again. Oh my goodness, your skin is flawless and goals right there. Wouldn't you feel good? I know I would. So when we, when we receive this compliment, what makes us feel good is that we didn't do much work to the picture, did we? All, all we did is cover, cover up a few patches that, couldn't, that might as well not have been there. I mean pimples, exfoliate, shadows, more sleep. It's that simple. You're being complimented on the best version of yourself, one that is only a few changes away from your actual self, and it's the closeness between the two that the compliments help us see. And once we see this, once we see this closeness, closeness and recognise that it's there, that's what makes us feel good about ourselves, and that's what increases our confidence. Now, back to what I said earlier. When, when we receive a compliment, uh, oh, sorry, when we receive a compliment, when we uh, post these pictures, they are realistic and achievable versions of ourselves. And still talking about Photoshop here, realistic does mean achievable because they're minimum. So we remove the shadows from under our eyes, right? But maybe if we'd gotten a bit more sleep the night before, they wouldn't have been there. And it's that simple again. You would have posted the picture without having done any work to, the, uh, to remove shadows because they weren't there. And people still would have complimented you for, for them. And you didn't use Photoshop this time. If this is the confidence that helps you get rid of the urge to use Photoshop the next time. This is where the self-confidence has improved. And you can see yourself developing as a person, developing your self-confidence, that you don't rely on people, uh, or you don't rely on other people's compliments for you. And it's the moment of realization where you recognize that you actually are stunning yourself, that you don't need the Photoshop where it hits you the most. So you understand you, you are pretty. And once, you, once you've understood that, can't you say that your self-confidence has improved? Now, it's not to say that once we've achieved our idea of perfection, that we should let go. And it's not to say that we shouldn't. But it's, it is to say that wanting a little change for you is normal. It's part of our human nature, striving to be the best. And we, again, we could even argue that this is why we resort to apps such as Photoshop and feature-enhancing filters, because we want to look the best that we possibly can. And afterwards, even if you do go back to Photoshop, it's not a problem, because Photoshop helps you, get, helps you, gives you courage to be able to post that selfie that you've always wanted to post, 
uh, but you've always thought you'd have been on it. Or maybe to post that birthday reaction video that you didn't know was being filmed. It gives you the courage to be able to feel confident in yourself and feel good in yourself. Now, this newfound carefree attitude, which you will develop after some time, comes after weeks of reworked posts, after hours of effort going into posts, making them look Instagram worthy. Goes into goes after minutes and seconds of holding that faultless, carefree attitude, uh, faultless pose, uh, trying to highlight your best angle. It's come after the act of posting and editing and touching up has become so mechanical that you'll post whatever you want. It's come after a solid level of self confidence has been achieved. Now, this newfound carefree attitude will ultimately lead you into posting all natural things because you don't rely on the comments of others to help you feel good because you have the confidence in yourself. And even, and even uh, and like I said earlier, even after, if you do resort to Photoshop, it's not a problem. But what's important is that the Photoshop and the filters have helped you move further than where you were before on day one. So can we say that uh, editing our pictures do give us our confidence? Yes, we can. I think after this talk, we can say that definitely to an extent, our self-confidence have, have, has improved greatly. And even if it doesn't get you all the way there, it's a definitely, it's a definite important step along the way. Thank you.